Welcome to Weapon of Shmasa. Today, we have as a guest Gabi Lasky, Israeli human rights attorney and member of the Tel Aviv Jaffa City Council. She is also the lawyer of Ahed Tamimi and her mother, Nariman Tamimi, both Palestinians. This interview was recorded in June. Um, you've been working on the case of Ahed Tamimi, a Palestinian girl, 16 years old, arrested during the night of the 19th of December 2017. Can you explain what happened in that day? Well, actually, the day she was arrested, it's not the day that um, that the soldiers were in her house, uh, in her backyard. Um, and... Uh, Several minutes before before the incident that we can see in the video, uh, her 15 year old cousin was shot in the head, and she and he was turned to the hospital in a state of coma. Um, so Mustafa Tamimi, was, is yes. that? Mm-hmm. So she was um, very disturbed regarding that, and taking also into consideration that she's a second generation uh, living under occupation and that her land was stolen um, by a settler. Um, so at that moment, while the soldiers were in her backyard, she she asked them to go out, and she tried to push them away from her house using her hands, her bare hands, while the soldiers were heavily armed. And this scene was, was, video, was um, in Facebook Live, by her mother, and that same day, it was the 15th of December, the soldiers didn't do anything regarding the incident. They didn't even write a report on it, and she wasn't arrested. Only after the video went viral and um, members of parliament in Israel saw it, they started to say that she has to be arrested and taken to prison for the rest of her life. Uh, And so that's when the army decided to arrest her in the middle of the night, uh, taken from her home. She was uh, um, taken uh, by the by the, pol- the police and the army uh, without summoning her before that. And then she was taken uh, to interrogation. Um, the Israeli Ministry of Education, I think you were mentioning that, uh, Naftali Bennett said, uh, the women seen assaulting Israeli soldiers in the video should finish their lives in jail. Is that what you're mentioning? Yes, and not only him, also the Minister of Defense um, reacted to the video in uh, in a manner of saying <laughs> that she has to be incarcerated, <clears throat> as if we were not dealing in, in a state of democracy where first you have to summon someone to to investigation and then you have to decide what to do and then you have to have a trial who have, that has to be a fair trial. But no, the Minister of Education is already sending a 16-year-old uh, young woman to prison for her for the rest of the, her life. You know, it's very educational. Hmm. Uh, following Ahed's arrest, um, Ahed's mother, Nariman Tamimi, and her cousin, Noor, Tamimi were also arrested a few days afterwards. Manal Tamimi, Ahed's cousin, was also arrested. Um, and then Noor and Manal were freed in January. Why were they arrested? Why is uh, uh, why were the mother and cousin of Ahed also arrested during those uh, days following the arrest of Ahed? Well, Noor was arrested and indicted because she also took part in, in the trying to get the soldiers out of the home. Actually, Noor, I was able to release her from her detention, um, so she didn't get. Um, and she was indicted, but her her punishment was not uh, jail time because we were able to release her. Um, her mother, uh, Nariman Tamimi, went to the police station when Nayat was arrested because there is a right for a parent to be present during an interrogation of a minor. And instead of allowing Nariman to be present at the, at the interrogation by Tamimi, uh, the police arrested her immediately, and she was then indicted for... Um, for uh, um, Inside. Presenting the, for, for the video, and yeah. Hmm. Um, so I had was... Um, for, for incitement, yes. 
Mm -hmm. So AHED was uh, tried in a military legal system rather than a civil legal system. What does that mean? Can you explain? Well, since uh, the occupied territories are under military, Israeli military rule, there is no really a civil legal system there for Palestinians. So when a Palestinian is arrested, they all come in front of a military court um, by as well as um, a settler living in the occupied territories, committing an offense in the occupied territories, he will be sent to a civil court inside of Israel. And, and what's the and what's the difference? Like, what would you say is the difference between the civil uh, court and the, the military court uh, for the Palestinians? What 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 for for someone who doesn't really know what happens there? What is the difference for you as a lawyer too? Well, first of all, we have to understand that the military court is not really a court of justice since its sole purpose is to uh, perpetrate occupation because you're talking about a court of occupation. So any Palestinian that comes before a military court, they are seen as, you know, as enemies um, and not as a person that has the same rights and and. And so, in that sense, you cannot really serve, say that these courts are serving justice, but they're more serving the occupier and the occupation. Uh, while in a civil court, everybody comes um, with a baggage of rights, uh, and if those rights are not are, are infringed in any manner, then you know the trial can be uh, just. Uh, postponed, or it can be, uh, or the indictment can be erased. In uh, in Ayad's in case, um, the the fact of the matter is that if a Palestinian, if a settler would commit the same offense um, as Ayad was charged with, they would not come to a to a military court, and that in in the beginning they would not even be kept in detention until the end of their trial. So there's a very big difference between between the two systems. Hmm. Um, an Israeli report from 2011 uh, states that the military legal system has more than 99% of conviction rate, so 99.74%. Is that still true today? And, and, and what's the relevancy of that? Well, I don't know if if this exact statistic is right, but there is a very, very, very high um, number of convictions in the military court, and mostly because, uh, in a sense, the um, the trials take such a long time that they that and and most of the persons that come to to trial in the military courts are arrested until the end of their trial, so in in many in in many ways, a person prefers to end the ordeal with a plea bargain rather than stay in detention for a very long period of time that can amount a longer period of time than the trial than the punishment itself. So that is one. And secondly, since Palestinians are aware that this is not a court of justice, uh, it is very difficult to show that you are not guilty or that you are allowed to demonstrate in the occupied territories or to um, to defend your land and, and things like that if you're Palestinian. So since many of the Palestinians do not find it, the, this court as a court that can that that can give them justice, they they try to shorten the period of arrest for uh, you know as as long as possible. And secondly, since I said this is a court that perpetuates occupation, it is very 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 um, difficult for a Palestinian to be found not guilty in this court. Was that the case of Ahed? Uh, this uh, her sentence was revealed in March this year. Um, in 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 Ayat's case, uh, I the um, in the end we did get a plea bargain where she where she got eight months in, of prison term, while the prosecution wanted in the beginning to keep Ayat in detention or in, in, behind bars for for a period of longer than four years. So. 
Um, so taking into consideration the fact that in the IH indictment there were more than 40 witness, prosecution witnesses, her trial would have taken a very, very long time. Uh, and secondly, since there were all these statements already uh, not already finding I had guilty from the beginning, we knew that we couldn't get a fair trial. Not only that, that during the trial, the, the judge, the military judge, decided to close doors in Ayat's trial to make it invisible for, you know, for uh, diplomats and for activists to be present in the courtroom to see what's going on, since they really wanted to hide um, what, you know, the truth from 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 everyone that's why you know while they decided to to close doors it was even more a more difficult task to 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 try and show what is really going on in the military courts and what is happening in Ayat's trial and since we know that her arrest was an arrest that was almost asked for by you know by Israeli politicians, we knew that we couldn't really find justice in the court. And and uh, having a trial behind closed doors, is that something normal too? Well, in in Israel, minor trials are are held behind closed doors because they want to protect the minor. But in the military court, the, that same that same closing doors in minor trials is in order to protect the court and not the minors. And specifically in this case, since the family, the lawyer, and I and herself, we were interested in open doors. So the court, um, while they didn't accept our plea to open doors, was protecting themselves and not protecting I. Hmm. So um, around 300 children are at the moment in prison in Israel's facilities. Uh, data from the DCI, uh, Defense for Children International, uh, Palestine, uh, state that a children's right that uh, uh, 26 children were put into solidarity confinement. A big majority is handcuffed or shown a paper in Hebrew to sign, blindfolded, suffer from physical violence, verbal abuse, and intimidation, or have no lawyer or family member present during the interrogation. Did Ahed suffer from any form of torture or ill treatment during the whole process? Well, first of all, to take uh, a minor from their bed in the middle of the night for, in for interrogation instead of uh, in summoning them to a police station, I think that that's, um, that is a misuse of power from in the beginning. But... Um, during her uh, during her interrogation, we have videos that show that there was an interrogator that uh, was um, that was uh, intimidating her by by saying uh, the things regarding her looks and was sitting too too close to her. There were two men uh, in in her in the room while she was there alone without a, the presence of her parents or a female. Um, and and we have all that. And not only that, that while she was arrested, her arrest was, uh, she was ca uh, handcuffed, uh, of course, and then um, her arrest was also filmed by the police and by the army, something that is completely unusual, but is also completely uh, illegal to do in the case of a minor. Yeah, so reports say that uh, the interrogator said something like, we will take everyone if you don't cooperate. So clearly intimidating her to talk, otherwise they would take people from, from her family. Is that true? Well, they, they, the interrogator um, specifically said names of members of her family and she said that if she doesn't talk, she, um, they will arrest those members of her family, including the, including other minors. But I have to say that I was very, 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 very brave, and she didn't, and she didn't speak in, during interrogation. Um, <clears throat> although, <coughs> excuse me. So during all her all her interrogation, she kept silent, 
um, as, uh, as, as I told her to do as her, as her lawyer, since again, in this case, we couldn't really find justice. So there was no real reason, um, to, to comply with their, um, with their intimidation and start talking. Hmm. So um, last year I've been to, to uh, DCI in Ramallah uh, and I've been told that children with 16 or 17 years old have exactly the same legal provisions as adults in Israeli law. Um, Ahed was 16 when she was arrested. Um, what's the consequence of that into this and other cases of, of um, uh, children with 16 or 17 years old? No, well, first I have to I have to say that the military law has been changed, and now uh, a minor, even if they're Palestinians, they are considered to be minors until they until they are eighteen. So this has been already changed, although for a very long period of time, in a minor in a Palestinian minor was considered a minor, and only until they were sixteen. But this has changed. But still, there are a lot of differences between the military uh, law and the and the Israeli civilian law regarding how to treat children during interrogation and detention. Um, and although if there are two two children, two minors, an Israeli an, an Israeli settler and a Palestinian, let's say, throwing rocks at each other in the occupied territories, both will be taken to the same police station. But there, their rights will be completely different. If a my Israeli minor has, be, has to be present, taken in front of a judge in, in the period of 12 hours, they can keep a, a Palestinian minor in detention without seeing a judge for, um, for a period of four days. Um, so it means that there is a difference of um, legal uh, legal rules that bind you depending on your ethnicity, if you are Jewish, Israeli, or if you're a Palestinian. And that, you know, that is completely um, apartheid. There's no other way to say that. If two rules apply to separate people according to their ethnicity, then it means that there is no real um, equality in the application of the law. Mm. Um, on the 6th of June, uh, Ahed was, was denied an early release from prison. From prison. Um, so a parole board decided to, to deny that. Um, why was that? You, you wrote on a tweet, uh, the board stated that she holds radical ideology and is still dangerous. That's what they wrote. That's what they believe. There was a... Uh... There was a G, um, there was a, um, uh, a, an opinion from the Israeli security services saying that she is uh, still dangerous, and uh, that when she, if she's re early, if she's released early, then she will present uh, a problem, um, and other youths will come in her steps and since she has holds radical ideology then she shouldn't be released uh, or given parole and that's what the parole board decided and uh, of course it, we didn't believe that she would be uh, granted an early release but uh, it is fairly it is very difficult to consider um, a fair decision when when someone living under occupation retains the ideology of ending the occupation and it's being seen as the occupier's court as radical ideology. Gavilaski, thank you so much. Thank you. Epena Fumaça is produced by Bernardo Afonso, Frederic Raposo, Maria Almeida, Pedro Miguel Santos, Pedro Zuzarte, Sofia Rocha, Tomás Pereira, Tomás Pinho, and by me, Ricardo Esteves Ribeiro. Visit fumaca.pt for new episodes and subscribe to our newsletter and wherever you get your podcasts. Até já!